Hello, I'm Tsuneo Sasai from Kyoto University. It's an honor to present our study at this video abstract. I'd like to share with you the key highlights from our paper about long-term prognosis of antimelanoma differentiation associated gene 5 positive dermatomyositis with interstitial lung disease. Interstitial lung disease, ILD, accompanied by MD5 positive dermatomyositis, often progresses rapidly and takes poor prognostic outcomes. We reported the efficacy of combination therapy with high dose glucocorticoid, calcineurin inhibitor, and intravenous cyclophosphamide in the Malcenta clinical trial. As you can see this figure, the survival rate of short time had been improved by this treatment regimen. However, there is no evidence of their management during remission maintenance phase. Therefore, we evaluate the long-term outcomes and the effect of induction therapy on remission maintenance. This study includes two researches. First, we examined the long-term prognosis of patients enrolled in a multi center prospect study which we previously examined the efficacy of induction therapy. Specifically, we analyzed the relapse free rate of ILD and the withdrawal rate from steroids and other drugs after achieving remission. The remission criteria was defined as survival for more than six months without recurrence of ILD after initial treatment. Second research is a comparison with conventional therapy. After adding patients achieving remission at our institute, we divided these patients into two groups by the content of induction therapy. First group is triple therapy group. Patients treated glucocorticoid, calcineurin inhibitor, and cyclophosphamide. Second group is conventional therapy group. Patients treated either only glucocorticoid or glucocorticoid and calcineurin inhibitor. Between both groups, we compared the relapse-free rate of ILD and the drug withdrawal rate of immunosuppressants. Let me show the results. First, I will show you the long-term prognostic data of the multi center study. The recurrence-free rate of ILD at five years from the initial treatment was 100%. The withdrawal rate of calcium inhibitor and glucocorticoid was 70% and 53% respectively. The withdrawal rate of all immunosuppressants, I mean both glucocorticoid and calcium inhibitor, was 38%. These are the changes of clinical parameters from the initial treatment to the maintenance phase. The ferritin and KL6 levels, which were considered poor prognostic factors, were significantly lower in the maintenance period than at the beginning, and the median value remained within the standard range. You can see this figure. The median value had decreased to the standard value almost one year after the initial treatment. And MT5 titers also remained within standard range in the remission phase. The median antibody titer had decreased to within the standard value in one year. Pulmonary function test significantly improved in the remission phase compared to the induction phase. Next, I'll show you the comparative data on long-term prognosis by categorizing the content of initial induction therapy. I call the triple therapy group as group T and the conventional therapy group as group C. This is the patient background. There was no differences between both groups in terms of age, gender, and serum data such as CRP and ferritin. The predicted diffusion capacity for carbon monoxide was significantly lower in group C. This is because some patients in group C were diagnosed all the time and the concept of ILD with anti-MD5 were not familiar. As a result, some patients in group C might have been delayed diagnosis and worsened respiratory function. With regard to treatment, the initial dose of prednisolone was significantly higher in group D. This is the result of the prognosis. The recurrence free rate of ILD in group T was 90% and significantly higher than that in group C. 
The withdrawal rate of carcinogen inhibitor and glucocorticoid in group D were also significantly higher than those in group C, which were 79% and 43% respectively. About the withdrawal rate of both carcinogen inhibitor and glucocorticoid, there was no significant difference between both groups. However, some patients in only group D achieved complete withdrawing from both carcinogen inhibitor and glucocorticoid. This is the change of prednisone dose. As mentioned earlier in the patient background, prednisone dose at the start of treatment was significantly higher in group T. However, at three years, the median prednisone dose in group T was 3 mg, which was significantly lower than that in group C. Based on these results, we turn to the conclusion. Triple combination therapy at induction phase brought not only improvement of survival rate during the induction phase, but also retention of a high recurrence free rate during the maintenance phase. Moreover, some cases withdrew immunosuppressants completely. Triple combination therapy brought higher recurrence free rate, higher withdrawal rate of immunosuppressants, and lower maintenance dose of prednisone compared with conventional therapy group. Induction therapy with triple combination drugs are beneficial during not only induction phase, but also in the long term. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you for your listening.